The Aloha Classic is a Bennett Sports presentation. I'm Corky Carroll, and we're about to take a look at some of the most spectacular wave riding performances I've ever seen. We'll be covering the Aloha Classic World Wave Sailing Championships at Hukipa Beach Park in Maui, Hawaii. David? Once again, it's the island of Maui that is hosting this $28,000 regatta, which has featured 160 of the best top men and women professionals from around the world. We have sailors here from Africa, Italy, France, West Germany, Austria, Great Britain, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, even Tahiti. But it is the Kama'aina, as they say, the local that has the advantage here in the Hawaiian waters. The Aloha Classic draws competitors from all over the world. The Hawaiian Islands location, nearly 3,000 miles off the California coast, makes Maui a major journey, even for most Americans. We met California board sailor Rich Myers at the Los Angeles International Airport on his way to Maui. I'm gonna compete for my first time in the master's division this year and I'm gonna go up against Doug Hunt who was last year's champion plus some other really hot guys like Jerry Lopez, Robin Cortez, Craig Masonville and the whole crew and I think this year is gonna be some pretty interesting conditions I think we're gonna have some big waves should be pretty fun. As you can readily see this masters competition came to be known by the incredible wave conditions the masters final took place in what has come to be called Massive Monday the surf was so big, most people didn't even want to go out. We asked Rich Myers his view of the conditions prior to competing. The trick will be to get outside through the sets, and um, you got to time the sets right and get the right lulls. But I think it's going to be pretty scary once you get out there. <laughs> if somebody gets out during a seat, he's going to win for sure. We're talking courage now. <laughs> well, courage and luck. You know, to get through something like that, you've got to be really lucky with your timing. Or have a real floaty board. What are the risks then, going on the rocks? I would say the risk for death by drowning <laughs> and uh, ruining your equipment. Rich Myers versus Craig Masonville. For the Masters Wave Sailing Championship, Rich Myers and Craig Masonville meet the monster surf head on. Incredible conditions, the North Shore of Maui is getting pounded. Will they attempt to go to the outside? Myers with a little jump off the inside, the whitewater. Meyer stays to the inside and is going to compete in the Masters final on the inside. There's just no chance to get to the outside, so Myers cuts loose on the inside on this small swell. Craig Masonville, blue sail, transition, a nice move, steps to the tail of his board, snaps it around, and picks up this whitewater. Masonville, originally from Michigan, on the blue sail, from Santa Monica, California, comes Richie Myers. Very anticlimactic. 5,000 people on the beach watching this Masters final, and they are sailing two foot slop. 
Myers continues with the wave. Masonville pulls out. Myers scores points. His transition, a clean exit. Stays upright, and he shoots on out with some speed. Another inside wave for Craig Masonville. Masonville scoring some points. To the outside, Richie Myers has made it. He's found an opening, a lull in the waves. Rich Myers, 31 years old, an actor, a model, from Santa Monica, California, is way to the outside while Masonville goes down on the inside and can only hope to get restarted. Look at the wave to the outside. Rich Myers is out there. He does his transition. The largest wave of the set. This is a 10-foot groundswell. Now it hits the reef. It's got some west into it. It starts to close out. He shoots straight for the bottom and tries to get away from this wall of white water. Richie Myers gets eaten. Richie Myers gets axed by this 20-foot wall of water, loses his rig, and he is being tossed around underneath that water. Hopefully he's okay. Everybody on the beach is watching. The lifeguards are helpless. There's no way they can survive that. Myers now takes a deep breath, goes down deep as he can. He is getting worked. It is incredible. Myers makes it to the outside and just gets worked by the largest set wave. He has lost his rig. It is to the inside. He is waving for help. No one right now that can help him. Myers now trying to get some air in his lungs. He has just been totally torn apart, thrown around, and beat up by the surf. His rig looks like it's still intact. It is all on the inside. He waves. He has now made it to the inside. He's totally out of breath, but he's waving for a caddy. Trying to get started and getting worked is Craig Mastonville in the blue sail. He stays with his rig and gets thrown over the falls. He stays with it, though. Here comes Doug Hunt, last year's defending Masters champion, third place this year, eliminated from competition. He is the caddy. He caddies for Rich Myers, brings out a whole new rig. Rich is totally exhausted. And Hunt swims off to try to recover Richie Myers' rig further upwind. And Myers can barely get on the board. He is totally exhausted. Meanwhile, Craig Masonville tries to score some points. Rich looks around, and here comes Doug Hunt, a great cat. He all sorts of strength. Quickly swims up when gets Richie's rig. It's still intact. Just a couple of seconds left in this heat. Rich Myers tries a quick water start. He is up. But that is it. This is the end of the heat. Red flags up, and Rich Myers and Craig Masonville end the most dramatic heat in Masters competition history. Myers comes ashore, thankful that he's alive. I like to tell you this. Mary I said the consequences are drowning by death. Or death by drowning. It's true. I almost did it. <laughs> wow. Let's get out of the out of the fire. Okay, the wave you caught. It was gnarly because there's no wind on it until the very end. And I couldn't get away from that. I just go and it just the lip chased me and caught me. You felt it coming at you. I looked back, I go, oh, ah, get out of here. But I couldn't because it wasn't the right wind. The direction was too east. Yeah, you didn't try to hold, sure, huh? yeah. You didn't try holding on your board? Oh, it just got yanked out of my hand so fast. I couldn't try, hold on, no way. How long were you held under? Uh, I don't know, until I almost died. <laughs> really long, long time. I, I did about four or five somersaults underneath, about 30 feet down. OK, <laughs> you think, can the lifeguard save me? They Should I couldn't. give up and wave? No, I couldn't give up, but I, I waved and lifeguard couldn't save you, man. Take, I'd be dead by the time you got out there. <laughs> were you waving for a caddy or were you waving the for the lifeguard? first I was just going, ah, let's hope I know I was in trouble. But then by the time I got in here, then I was waving for my caddy. When I realized I was not in big danger anymore. Swallow any water? Tons. I'll be throwing that up for a while. And I'm, I'm all lightheaded right now. You guys all look funny. <laughs> 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 I just hope I'm still undefeated because I don't really want to go back out there. Seemed like an eight-minute swim that might have lasted an eternity for you. Yeah, I thought it was my last swim. <laughs> okay, when you got your rig in there, you couldn't see it floating around? Or I just... couldn't see anything. I could barely see, you know, I, I saw Doug standing here with my other rig, but I didn't, had no idea where that one was. Buddy! <laughs> I don't know what to say. I know what to say. It feels good to be on the beach. <laughs> and the new Masters Wave Sailing Champion of the Aloha Classic, Rich Myers.
All I know is that was one big wave. You look like you were in pretty bad condition out there. Uh, been kind of being held down for a long time, jerked around. How did it feel like? It looked to us like you were drowning. Well, I was drowning. <laughs> and I tried waving for help at first, and I saw that that wasn't to my avail. It looked pretty gnarly. What happened? Well, I didn't know what was really going on. All I know is I, it's time to start saving each little breath. Sort of beyond panic, huh? Yeah, it was uh, actually kind of relaxing. Thought a lot about little trivial things like, what, you know, who's going to spend my winning check money and who's going to be able to cast a check. And then I thought about why I kind of predicted my own um, drowning in the interview right before I left out there. I said, yeah, it's consequence of death by drowning. And here I am doing that exact thing. Then I just didn't panic anymore and just thought, well, it's it. And just relaxed. And next thing I knew, I popped up. Noticed that uh, it was time to get into shore, so I swam in as fast as I could. That was a pretty big wave. You know, there's a lot of interesting theories on how they judge waves, but that looked like a big one to me. How big do you think it was? Well, um, it's probably on a Hawaiian scale about 12 feet. And if you measure from the feet, the bottom of the wave to the crest, it's about a 20, 25 foot face, I imagine. All I know is that was one big wave and one bad wipeout. Yeah, hope that didn't happen again. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, I'm about to meet someone that I never ever would have imagined I would actually get to meet. And if any of you have been windsurfing for a long time, then I'm sure you'll like this video. I was at a woodworker's, like a furniture maker yesterday, and he uh, mentioned that a guy called Richie had done the work on his house. Well, I'm just here with my mate Ross, who I'm staying with down south. And we, uh, I met um, Scott Horsborough, who's a um, master craftsman when it comes to fine furniture and tables and all that sort of thing. So come up this way, Paul. So the first job Richie did for me back in 99 was the roof on that house and the carport. Yeah, that was my introduction to Rich Myers Carpentry. He's a highly skilled man. I've used him to build everything. So he's, he's built this workshop as well. 2013. Wow. No, it's just it's beautifully done, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So what? Like what? He a never um... wears a shirt when he's working because he's ripped with a six pack. And he's very proud. <laughs> to show people what he's up to right now, because he's um he certainly hasn't slowed down by the looks of it. No, he hasn't slowed down. He's got a great reputation down here. That's why he's busy. Okay, so if anyone wants fine furniture made in the area, free as well. Yeah, why not? Check it out. I'm assuming you have a website. If I sell anything by you, I'll give you a commission. Oh wow, well, okay. That's pretty cool. Anyway, thanks again, Scott. Let's hope to get on some Richie anyway. You're welcome, mate. I'm sure he'll I'm sure he'll call you. Sweet. And I said, is that Richie Myers? Because I heard Richie Myers lives in the area. He goes, yeah, yeah, it's Richie Myers. I go. Oh my god, so I'm, a, I'm a super keen windsurfer, Richie Myers, like a legend, you know, when I was young, I used to have the VHS and just watch the Loha Classic 1987 about a hundred times, where like Richie Myers gets eaten by that massive double mast eye wave, and I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to try and get in contact with him, so Scott, the woodworker, gave me Richie's number, contacted Richie, he sounds very similar to the same guy in the Aloha Classic video. I believe he's 66 years old now. This is going to be special. That's a nice jam. Is that Richie Myers? Yeah. Have I met you before? I've never met you, mate. Oh, okay. I hope you don't mind, but I'm just filming everything. Yeah, yeah, you go for it. Uh, sure it is an absolute pleasure to meet you. Okay. Hey, Paul. Just film it's whatever you guys Absolute pleasure. Good on you. I grew up loving windsurfing. Oh, okay, cool. Watch that Aloha Classic video <laughs> yeah. a thousand times. The drowning one. I was like 10 years old when I started watching that video. And never in my wildest dreams would I ever think that, you know, when you're a little kid and you see these videos for like 
Maui. I was living in Sydney. Oh, okay. And Maui might as well have been on a different planet as far as I was concerned. Yeah. So to be here and, and meet the legend himself. Wow, well, that, I, it's, uh, me, it's an honour. I don't even think about it, but um, if, you did, if you were to drown that day, I wouldn't be here. I remember that. That's what Reef and Rai always say to me. Because they, they, they don't windsurf, but they all surf really good. But they just remember the old... They, they look on there when I had brown hair, and they go... They look on YouTube and go, Hey, Dad! You, you, we wouldn't be here if you would have not drowned. Exactly. And um, right, a lot of things wouldn't happen if you drowned, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This he house wouldn't. Or did you build? Yeah, oh, I built, oh, you built this house. Yeah, I designed and built it. So I just designed. This is our second house that we had because we've got so many kids. Because I, I kind of um. How many kids have you got? We have two of my own. That's the whole. <laughs> that story's funny, isn't it? But it goes. I had one, and that's why I'm down here because he was his wife's from yelling up, and I met her in. Bali, and then we had a kid, and then we got married, and then we they moved back here. We separated and all that, but um, and then I had another kid with her, but she had four kids, so we have six. Oh wow! Kind of and where did you learn your carpentry trade? Um, I learned it in the beginning days from my brother-in-law, and really good builder for all those super um, movie stars and all that, like like uh, Van Halen guy and all that. So this the really best guy that taught me was a guy named John Narby in Maui. You know, uh -huh. so I did my apprenticeship with him, uh -huh. and he was amazing. It was gnarly. We call him John Gnarly, but because he just wouldn't give up on me. He said, "Yeah, could, I'm fired. Everybody's fired, but I'm not going to fire you." So he didn't fire me. <laughs> I go, "Fuck! Just fire me, man!" <laughs> I go, "Geez, get, get, you know, this is gnarly." But because he goes, "No, I believe in you," and, and so he just made me just stick with it. And then all of a sudden, I just, you know, it just pops out. You just, you know, you learn things. Mm. So, I was, so that's how I learned my carpet. That was the 80s, was it? No. Yeah, that was yeah. the 80s. No one knew they had an ocean view and they sold us the block. Wow. So cool. But I had to do it by myself. Yeah. No one wanted to help me until, they, until it was done. What, why'd you end up down here in like southwest Western Australia? Oh, that was the part of the kid. So when I was living in Maui and all this, I met, uh, you know, then I had a, a one wife from South Africa, but she kind of got divorced. But I didn't know that yet until she I found out later. And I met another lady named Joss, and she was Dave Sheen. He's an Unreal Windsor. Oh yeah, yeah. So he was their boyfriend, girlfriend. And I met him before, but then I met him her again in Bali, and then we got have a kid, had a kid, and then she came to Maui. We got married because she's from Yalinga. So my son, my first son, um, I still live in Maui, and I go, I wanted to live with him, so I came here. Uh -huh. And but in the meantime, she was with somebody else which is fine because the whole family, it, it all worked out. And then I met my wife now, and then we had another kid. Like I said, she had four before, and then I had six kids in a year. So it's cra It's a pretty crazy story. And your windsurfing's over and you got six kids? I finished the wind. I still windsurfed, but I'm not very good at um, port tack. Oh, right. I grew up, because I'm a, I'm a surfer and a regular foot surfer, so surf. I'm a surfer sailor not a sail surfer yeah 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 so you know a lot of a lot of guys came from the sailing so maui was good for you maui is perfect for me yeah. and malibu and mexico because uh, the winds yeah, are always, um true. starboard tack yeah. so I'm, I'm 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 a ready foot so i'm going down the line i want to side offshore i want to hit the lip and just surf i got that i had that pretty wired i was never really a racer i didn't get in it for racing and, and that because I, I hated rules but i had to do it you know, I go, I, I could never win a race because I didn't know where buoy to go around. So <laughs> if somebody was in front of me, I could follow them. So sometimes I would get second maybe, or sometimes uh, second to last. And, and the surfing got me through it all. The surfing knowledge got yeah, me yeah, through it yeah, all. Yeah, and I, yeah, but, yeah. I, you know, I, could, I used to teach windsurfing and all that, so I could get the techniques and all that. But I was no um, Robbie Nash or Matt Schweitzer or Mike Waltz. Or yeah. Those, those guys were um, Alex Aguera, Mike, Robbie, and Matt. They're, they're the guys who are there, and I was yeah, sure. there. But in the waves, you know, I could equalize with them. Yeah, they're right. all overall, they're the overall. Yeah. The, they're, they're the guys. Of course, yeah. I'm just a character. This is my little stuff box where she throws my shit in, so. That's your uh, walk-in wardrobe. That's mine. Look at this. You got any, oh, you've got Hawaiian shirts in there? Yeah. Sweet, right. Check these. I just got these. And from my, Look at this. From, I just came from America. My, Step, I mean, my stepdad gave me these fucking unreal ones. Oh wow, these are so, these are so nice. 
This this um reminds you of living in Maui. Oh yeah, because I mean, we, everybody has to wear one shirt there. <laughs> and that's just even the bankers. They're super um. These, these are high quality ones. Wow. Okay. These are high end Hawaiian shirts. Yeah, yeah. And oh, okay. don't, normally I wouldn't. Have, you know, I just got a gifted to a couple weeks ago. Like the kids over there, each one has their own room in case they go. Ah, right. They have, you know, when start bringing girls in and out, they don't have to go through the house. Yeah. How many How many people are living here at the moment? Right now, it's just my youngest son, our youngest son. Yeah. Couple live in Perth. Well, I have two sons living in Bali. Yeah, Reef, my first son, he's an artist. He's done all these a lot of these paintings in here, and um, he lives in Bali. And then our other stepson, Keaton, he's um, been there for thirty years, or not not thirty, fifteen years. Um, works for the AFP, Federal, Federal oh, Police, okay. as an interpreter. Oh right, wow. yeah. yeah. But then and, and another lives works for the government in um, Perth. And then Dan, the best surfer in our family, he is a roof plumber. So the surf gene got passed on, eh? Oh, yeah. yeah. So these guys, like kids, they, they surf way better. Right? They definitely got passed on, and they, they took it to another level. Do they have any appreciation for your windsurfing past, you yeah, think? Yeah, yeah. Oh, they do? They, they, they really do. Oh, cool. Yeah, they do. Um, they, yeah, they, they do appreciate it. Um, they never did it because when I moved here, because I was really a kook going port tack, but then I had a lot of um, spinal injuries. Oh, okay. So I had to kind of... That's what's fucked me up. Oh, yeah. I, I, I noticed there was... Okay, I didn't notice that scar, but I also noticed there was a oh, scar that, on your stomach right, there. Yeah, that's when I got rammed by a car, a Cadillac. Oh, really? That's when I was 15, though. That was a long time oh, ago. Oh, wow. Okay. But that, that that might cause my other lower back problems. I, it's just spinal. Yeah, yeah. Because I go diving. I do a lot of diving. So I got and windsurfing is really... <sighs> it's hard on the body, mate. Like, You've got to be fit and like your body's got to be healthy. It's hard, isn't it? Well, yeah. it, it, when it was healthy, and I... Fuck, I just got so worked, so many... You know, in the beginning days, because we were sort of, we didn't get to watch videos to learn, so we had to learn it. Oh, yeah. We're and the equipment it. you're on as well. And the event, I, oh, I fucking broke everything. Oh, it's hard. Way harder. Way yeah. harder. Because I didn't get, we didn't, we had to learn how to water stuff. Yeah. Because there wasn't nobody to watch before. Yeah. You know how it is. No, it's of just, course. So, um, oh, mate, with those, practice. I mean, I was a kid in the 80s, but I try to get a sense of what it must have been like windsurfing in the 70s. Like, you know, 70s was like, kicking off and eighties was yeah. hitting its stride. But you know, like it must have been such an exciting time because because basically it's like everything's new. Every year there's new equipment. It's all progressing quick. Like we we, we just, had to make the new equipment. Yeah. yeah, out, yeah. out of just roughness. Like with Matt Schweitzer. Here I'll come down and show you. Yeah. Um like Matt Schweitzer, he was from our area, but he moved to Maui. I actually I lived in Maui, then I moved back then he moved to Maui and then I met his girlfriend that became my girlfriend for a bit, Kelby. You ever know Kelby? Oh, Kelby Arno. Yeah, yeah. And Matt was living in Maui, and then I was back there, so I got hurt surfing, so I really, um, she taught me how to windsurf. Wow. Here's the boom. Because in that, in that 1987 Aloha Classic video, when you, when you get out of the water, oh, yeah, I Kelby think Kelby comes, comes yeah, out and hugs yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're still really good friends. Oh, right. And all Matt and I, yeah, everything, we're all, that was just one little brief moment in the 70s that, you know, that's how we became, we, Boyfriend, girlfriend for a bit, but yeah. we became very good friends, all of us. In fact, I just talked to her the other day. Um, yeah, how's she going? She's going really well. Um, she lives in Redondo Beach, and I think she just got all this. Is that in California? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's where we are all from, originally. Oh. Huntington, Santa Monica, Malibu, and um, that's where I met Kelby, and Matt's from um, Pacific Palisades, oh. and his dad, who they invented windsurfing. Yeah, no. Did you see the the doco movie that just came out no. recently? Um, oh, what's the name of it? He did like it's it's a whole documentary about the history of windsurfing okay. and like yeah, it's it's really good. It's no, probably, it's it's a, it. I, I, it'd be I, worth I, worth watching for yeah. you because you'll probably relate to it a hundred percent. Like you would live through that era. I, like I say, I was just one niche in it. Was surf I was surfing on a surfboard team for natural regression surfboards, so we did contests and that and that. But then. I got interested in the windsurfing, and then the, the owner, Terry Lukoff, he got wind, interested in it too, and Jay Riddle, he was our superstar surfer guy. So we all got in it together, and, and, and since we manufactured surfboards and designed them, started how to um, make our own custom boards. So we, you know, and then that started, so then they took us to Maui, and we're, we're just surfer guys, you know, to learn from the Maui guys in 81, went to the first Maui Grand Prix, and I didn't even know how to water start. <laughs> but um, I just I just hung in there and you know I think I got through one heat and then 
They go, oh, Robbie Nash, you gotta go against Robbie Nash. And they go, oh, okay, well, that's that's not good. How old was Robbie Nash then? Oh, he was young. He was just, you know, just long blonde hair. But he was the king, king, king then. He's always been the king. And um, But I was just a new cover learning. He went out, he did his gnarly jump before he got to the waves, broke his mast in half, and all I had to do was go out and catch one wave. But my, my mast, I couldn't pull a pull it, and he won. <laughs> But that was good because that would have been embarrassing for him to lose to yeah. some beginner guy. But that was our learning curve. And then we came back. I learned pretty quickly. I, I got all this stuff down and, and, and wave riding and found these good spots. Then we had the Malibu Grand Prix. We had three of those that my company sponsored. And um, so I got third in the first one, second in the second one, and first in the third one. And that, that was being a California boy. And then I did all the... Um, we had a California surf sailor tour, which I won a couple of years of that, you know, and, um, wow. so I was, a, I was a California sort of surf sailor champion on, only on wave riding. So never, but never so on what years was that? These are in the early eighties. Who's that guy in the ska ice skating, that Aussie guy? Oh, uh, Bradbury. Yeah. I did a Bradbury oh, yeah. in the, um, 87 Loha classic surf slalom. So I, I won the, I won the, the waves, but. <laughs> they go okay. Now we're doing the surf slalom, and and um, and I go fuck. I hate that shit. So and so I'm going down. We, all eight of us going around, going on the buoy, and everybody fell down. <laughs> and I go, oh cool, like oh, Fred Haywood, Klaus Simon, all the all the fucking heroes, you know. They 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 were better at racing than me, but I kind of knew the ways better. But they just I go oh shit. Okay, I fall. Oh bam 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 bam. Then I, I sailed all the way around them and did all the buoys. And I go, fuck, which one do I go last? And then I think it was Klaus. Oh, really? <laughs> and I still didn't win. It was either Klaus or Fred. <laughs> I forget, but I just go, they're all down. They're just cluttered up. And I'm just going, oh, shh, shh, shh. But then I got kind of lost out in the field. So I had to wait till one of those guys passed up, so I got second. And the sales back then is very different to well, now. Well, I, I used multi Simmer sales. Yeah, okay. So I, was one, I was his first team rider oh, cool. ever. He would just give me these sales they call them the no foot sales or something yeah they were just funky but i just kind of you just do what you I, you don't know anything and then they had that not normal one i guess mike called them so i only stuck with super sales the whole time yeah cool and um so i don't really and i wasn't the guy in the loft going hey you guys do this or that i was the guy go rich go out there and, and test it surfing and wiping out so i was kind of called the samsonite gorilla oh okay like, I hadn't heard that one. Oh, that's, that, that, that was an ad. It's big gorilla. Go send bangs all your, your things and <laughs> see if it breaks. It doesn't break. Yeah. So that's what they called me. Yeah, wow. So That's cool. Yeah. And actually, that wipeout you had, the, hey, the, famous, that, the, the sail didn't break. The sail didn't that, break. That, like, Nothing that broke. Is, I was the only thing broke. Mate, that is, it's a miracle. Oh. No, but seriously, yeah, dude, I, like, I, when I, you watch I, that, like even today, if you had a sail, oh. it would almost be guaranteed to something going wrong. How did... How did a 1987 mast and sail and boom and the I whole thing, what, how did it survive that? I don't know. Was that a day, fiberglass that, mast? That, what is no, that? It was a regular mast. But what's um, regular? Is that fiberglass? Yeah, I think we had carbon fiber. Was it carbon in 1987? And I had streamlined booms. Yeah, I think it was carbon fiber. But hold on, you, you wouldn't have had a carbon fiber mast Maybe in 1987, would you? Yeah, I don't know. It was 16 foot high. I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, okay. I thought that was later, but maybe. Oh, look, I don't know. No, I don't know either. And, yeah, but right. it wasn't one of the ones you clicked together. It was a full one. Yeah, yeah, one piece. And yeah. then I had Streamline Universal, and I had a, um, Sailboards of Maui, shaped by John Price. And that just got a bunch of dents in from the, from the Universal. And everything um, ate shit. I mean, everything survived but me. <laughs> and I, did, I thought, I, I didn't know what was happening because I was drowning. And Doug Hunt, Doug Hunt, my friend. Um, he was also always my closest competitor, so it was him and I were, you know, pretty much it was me and him all the time. Mm. So, but he lost to me, so he became my caddy, and he saved. And then he sails out to go my other board. I go, thanks, Doug. He goes, Rich, your board's right there. I go, where? And it was right there. I go, I can't see it. He goes, well, here, I'll get that in. You take this. And I go, and I took it in, and then luckily the horn blew, and I go, fucking thank God, because I didn't want to go back out. Nah. It was gnarly. It was, I, I, well, I lost Gnarly. a lot of brain cells, billions, because I went. I did go blind a after that interview. I, I walked up the beach to the village, and I went blind. Yeah, right. You know, I just. I so actually, what? Did you go to the doctor? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what did they say? They said you 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 were that close to drowning because you lost all, so many brain cells from lack of oxygen. 
So what, did it affect you later on in life? Well, I mean, I'm dumber now. I'll tell you these things. Like first, first boom. This is my That's your, hold on a second, is that your first boom? Yeah. What the hell? Did they hurt your Look hands? at that. Yeah, teak. And then, Holy moly. Uh, Chappie, this other guy gave this Dude. to me. The, these were the kind of universal joints we used to use. This is the original one. Wow, that's on the... This, this is the one Hoyle and um, Jim Jake designed and had a patent on the original one. This is what made um, the universal joint you know, patented. Yeah, that and, then, was... and then everybody, you know, they, they changed it after seven years after the patent was over. So. This was like a key component of the windsurfer, wasn't it? This was the, yeah. this was, yeah. this is the component that made it a windsurfer. Yeah. And it actually looks like it works pretty well. Oh, it works unreal. Yeah. But this is their, this is their engineering design, the universal joint. It's kind of like a knee. And that's where you tied your downhole to, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, you got your downhole there. Dude, what the hell is going on with this boom? This oh, is crazy. Right That's they're, the they're out Yeah, this is our out hole. And you go, eh, so there was no grip on it. You just grabbed no, it. No, the... you fucking wreck your hands. It was horrible. And that's... Stainless steel. <sighs> what I learned, I had... Kelby goes, doesn't matter if you surf. I don't give it. Surfers are the worst people to learn, teach because you think you know it all. Uh, and so you, you got to go, I don't know how to surf. Okay, teach me the whole technique. And girls always learn better because they listen. So once you learn the technique, then you can go off on your own thing. So that's what that's how I did it. And then so I teach in the middle of the day, and every day the wind come up, we'd go wave riding up at um, Stakus, Leo Carrillo, and just you know just surf because that's all I want to do anyways. And then this is my friend Mo. I don't know if you know this. He he died a few years ago. Um, Mo, where's he from? His, he's from here. Oh, okay. He's, he's, him and I would do big waves together, so we were big wave partners. Oh. And um, he had melanoma, oh. and he died at um, 38. So, so he did this self thing before he died. We'd be surfing together and all that. And I, I told, I promised him, I'd take his ashes and put him in a big tube. So Mo, you, you, he's, he's a um, hero here. That's so cool. And um, so it's a Moseum. That's our board. So that's Mo. I just towed him into it, and that's Mo and Jake Patterson. So I had his ashes in here for like oh, five years. I promise I'll tow you into a big wave. And then that's where I'm doing right here. So he's in my hand right there in this hand. And I'm towing him into a wave at Yalinga and let it go oh, his ashes. Oh, you, you did it there? Yeah, Yalinga. Dude, what a way to send someone off. Yeah, well, that's well, we did it. Amazing. And, uh, and everybody thought I was going to go too. That is so cool. Well yeah. done. Wow. So, that, that was, that, so that's why it's called the Mosean. The family trophy room. Yeah, this is so cool. I'm just taking my time here oh, because okay. there's a lot to see. There's a lot. Oh yeah, it's all keep. Dude, that's there. a that's a good photo. Yeah, I, isn't I, that? I did a lot of uh, calendars. And then that, that's yelling up there. If you had to take a guess, how many sessions you had out of keeper windsurfing? How many you reckon? I, uh, I, got, I have no idea because all I did was windsurf there every freaking day. Really? Yeah. What's this? Pier to no, that, pier? No, that was a lame thing. Uh, Malibu Pier to Santa Monica Pier. Baseball? That's my dad. He was he was, played for the Dodgers. He was a baseball player. Oh, that's professional team. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's my dad, yeah. He was at um, Brooklyn Dodgers he played for. So he got a couple World Series. He, so that was that a... Um, was that a good like? Because nowadays, if you're a baseball player, you're like a millionaire. I mean, back yeah, in no, those that, days, he, it was like... Yeah, he was going to be, but then he beat up the Empire and put him in the hospital for a month so he got kicked out. He got what? He beat up the umpire, called him oh, out. Oh, the umpire, I think he said yeah. the empire. No, the yeah. umpire. Oh. So he had a bad temper, so like, Dad, he was gonna be one of the new guys to replace the other um, Hall of Famer, Roy Capanella, but my dad had a bad temper. And, really? And he got pissed off the umpire, and he punched him out and put him in the hospital for a month, almost Holy killed him. Shit. So he got, he got banned from professional baseball. Okay. <laughs> Pretty funny. That pirate ship at, at Padang Padang, and that's me, I stole these, I didn't steal them, but I took all these portholes and then the pirates chased me out and um, I was there and then I had to slide down that rope and they were chasing me and my really? wife and son. That was pretty funny. To Jimmy's. Yeah, that, Jimmy's Z's, they were my sponsor. So who, what was Jimmy's? Jimmy's was a clothing co company. Look at that. That's When yeah, you had brown hair. Oh, yeah, I, my, when I had kids, my hair went white. Look at those harness lines. Mate, that's sick. Wow, look at that. That was in 82 or 3 in Mexico. <laughs> for the first, 
Oh, look at that bottom turn. Yeah, I love that. That's my Holy favorite. Holy moly. That's a whole keeper. Dude, how much... <laughs> I love that. One. That's crazy. I've never seen a bottom turn like that. Just my little surfing class from California and here and all that. Um, yeah. When I used to be able to surf, but now I'm getting too old. Oh, so you're not surfing much anymore? Yeah, no, I still surf, but oh. not like I want to. This yeah. a, that's San Carlos. Yeah, I okay. turned into surf camp, but that's what place I discovered for the. Um, yeah, so to just yeah. tell us quickly about that, because you're saying okay. you you reckon you discovered it, or? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, is it for for modern day surf, windsurfing, I went and actually the first, there's some other guy that did it, but Brian Bell and I did the first um, exploratory thing there because we didn't know you know surfing is pretty new, windsurfing is pretty new, so I went with Brian and a couple girl models and uh, this guy in Fiji, Scott Funk, told me. It's a really good place for high uh -huh, wind. Uh -huh. I've got to support you, Sam. Sorry, you made a guy. What are you doing? You went with some girl models. So what yeah, well, Brian Billman, he's a professional photographer, right? Oh, okay. So on his off time, he would he surfs, shoots surfing and all that, but he also would shoot modeling shots. So oh, he, I see. You know, like I used to do modeling. Yeah. So we, you know, that was his side money. Oh, I see. Models. Yeah. So we brought a couple down there, and they thought we'd take them to a hotel, but we took them to this desert, no toilets and. A couple of magazine articles and and uh, start just telling people I do and it was our escape and then everybody finally just got out of the bag and everybody finally found out about it because we used to we just uh, write an article and say it was somewhere else all the time different names and we we flip it make it look like lefts I think we got about ten articles out of it before it got found out and then everybody came down and then they decided well they, they go out oh, it's it's out of the hat let's you know some guy a good guy bought it. To keep it out of bad hands, and then now they made that surf camp San Carlos. Yeah, they've closed it down for a couple of years. Oh wow! Okay. They're doing different things that um, I hope I don't get shot for this, but they're doing some things not to do with windsurfing, but lobsters and all that. So it's a oh I see. It, it's kind of a dangerous area right now. Yeah right. Oh, that's oh. Fiji. Holy that's a shit! That's a, Who's that? That's me. I was a lifeguard. And I was towing all the other guys at like Kobe Bryant and all that, and um. Kobe Bryant. Kobe, oh, Kobe Abaddon. Yeah, Kobe Abaddon. Oh, really? So I was talking to I'm from Maroubra, so yeah, yeah. that's where he's from. Yeah, yeah, right. So, since I, he goes, hey, Rich, you want a tow? And I go, yeah, so he told me into that. So he gave What's me What's it a, like surfing a wave like that, mate? That's unreal. That lasted forever. It was so long. This is the one where Kelly Slater won the globe at Tabura. So is this like 2008 or something? Might be. The next day, Larry and I towed out here. It was twice as big. And, twice and as big? Twice as big. This is the small day. What? Yeah, it was twice as big. The Globe guys asked Larry, goes, listen, we don't want you, can nobody take pictures because you're, you're, we don't want to take away from Kelly and the Globe. Are you thing. serious? Yeah. But all the photographers, no one took pictures that day because all the photographers were taking pictures of the amazing Kelly yeah. one. And I remember I caught this, Larry told me into this wave. And I go, wow, what is that, 20 foot? And he goes, no, 19 and a half feet. <laughs> I go, <laughs> he just, he goes, I go, you want to, I go, you want me to tell you anything? Larry he goes, nah, it's not big enough. The lad, he just has no fear out there, does he? Or what? Um, no, he's just very capable. I, I would not say he has no fear. He's a very confident. He, he respects the ocean, and he just knows when and when yeah, not to do it. Picks his battles. I get scared. I was scared, but you know, my pants, shorts got ripped off in one wave. I had to come. He had to tow me back <laughs> naked to the boat. <laughs> Was there any windsurfers out then? No, but they, they, well, that would have been a good day. Like Jason Pollock or Robbie, I think, because that's Port Tech. Those guys would that would have, that was super windy. Side offshore, it would have been unreal. Wow! It, uh, like, see that? That's Kevin Naughton. This is the ninety-eight. We, we opened up Fiji. I had I got heaps of um. Oh wow! What have you got in here, mate? You got all sorts of stuff in here. Yes, heaps. And um, that's Tavaro in 1984. We did. We opened the island up. But this is a magazine that just has all like ocean sports. That's kind of cool. Well, yeah. this was this is this is a uh, surfer magazine, and that's me. That's this is this day. This is right here. This is that boat, same boat. Oh, he jumps no. in. Oh, okay. And that, well, we did windsurf magazine too. So <laughs> now the man calendar that it was supposed oh to be for God. girls, but all the gay guys bought it. This is all Mexico. Was well, there a lot of women windsurfing back oh, then? Oh, there were so many. There were so hot. Were yeah, they? Beautiful, unreal. The, the girls back then were so good. Oh, there's, give us a look at that. That's the oh, yeah. um, poster oh, yeah. for the... Oh, yeah, that thing. 40 bucks for a video back in 1987. Good or bad? Well, imagine how much, $40 in 1987. How, that's probably like, 
you know, a mm-hmm. couple of hundred dollars an hour. I don't know. Or you know, I mean, it's forty dollars in nineteen eighty seven. It's probably like a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars now Is with it? inflation. I never thought about because mate, you can't buy even it. buy a DVD now. Like DVD now, what twenty bucks? 50, it's like cheaper. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. So it's probably expensive. Well, that was a long about. time ago. I know. Corky Carroll, he's my surfing oh, hero. Oh, yeah. And he was so cool to me. And I think he went out with my sister and did her years before when I was a kid. I didn't want to say anything when he was interviewing me. Like, hey, um, are you did serious? You know my sister? I didn't do that. Serious? I thought about it. I go, you know, uh, yeah. But you know how surfers are. Cloud break in 1984 before they opened the island, before the, the um, men's surfers. I mean, anybody. Wait, what do you got? Can I have a look at that? Yeah, yeah. Oh. This is the paperwork from the 1987 yeah. hook. Mm. Hello, a classic. Yeah, I got all. I you know I got. I never lost a heat in three years. I, did, I won three in a row. So, because you're in the ma- what's the masters? That's thirty years and over. Oh, okay. It's not very old, is it? Uh, well, then we thought it was old. <laughs> this has the. Um... So what's it saying? Oh, there. Here? That's the one with the big wave. Oh yeah. yeah. So what magazine is this? It's Windsor. You want a beer? Actually, you know what I was I would absolutely love? Yeah. It would be a cup of tea. Oh, yeah, no worries. Look at the crowds. There's wow. 5,000 people watching me drown. This is the Fiji one in 84 before. That's with Suzanne and me right off Tabarua. Oh, right, okay. You did photo shoots. You know, was, we promoted the island for Surf, Surfer Magazine and Windsurf Magazine. Way before Scotty and all those guys. Way before Nomotu. What is this? Yeah. Look at all these people. Here's some old stuff. Doug Hunt and calendar I did for Windsurfer. Wow. Because I used to be on their team. That's not a bad turn for a board like that. Oh, it was horrible. I had to do it for their, their ad, you know. Oh, look, the wind weapon. Yeah. <laughs> that was the lamest thing ever. This is in Mexico. Um, there's John Geyer, me, Jay Riddle, Mike oh, Watson, John me. Oh, John This is, this is a, you can look through these. I'll go get your team. Oh, that's Sima. What a turn. That's hectic. Thanks for coming by during the holidays to talk about your contract. 1989, should I be looking at this? Is this private information? I'm happy to inform you that we are able to offer you 180 day terms on your production sales. Thanks for your support, keep shredding. Another year, another successful season. How has this compared to the others? Really, it's been a year of sliding through. It's been pretty shitty for me personally, but on the racing side, it's been good. It's affected my family and personal life though, and now I've got to sort out that side of things. Even the legends get problems, eh? Victory wetsuits. Pete Cabrina is another legend. Does anyone wear wetsuits like that anymore with like a tank top springy thing? Star of the Bold and the Beautiful. This is, I, I wrote this article on Malibu. Because back in those days, windsurf, they tried to sort of incorporate windsurfing with just popular culture. I yes, mean, like, exactly. That was part of your contract. You have to, you know, go here and you know, get incentives. So, I, I, you know, I used to be extra for the A team. And, the A team? Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I did heaps of stuff. TJ Hill, really? And Mr. T. How did you get all those gigs? Um, through windsurfing, because guys, like the guy who, the stunt coordinator for it, Steve Boyum, he windsurfs, and so since I was the top windsurfer guy there in Malibu, that's where all the movie stars live. So he would go out and you know, windsurf with me, and they go, hey, you want to do this? I go, yeah. So he always get me into all these jobs. I was always cat, typecast as a surfer boy or a beach boy. So I got, got all the, um, yeah, I get to hang out with all the beach girls, different commercials and all that kind of stuff. What's it like working in the, uh, the, the sort of entertainment industry? Well, it's... Um, it was good then because the money once you're in the union, if you're in the union is good, but it, it's 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 over glamorized. You know, there's still work. You get work all day. And... A windsurfer, they want to get a jump for Chevrolet commercial, a really expensive commercial. And then I had this agent goes, oh, this Richie guy, he does it. He'll do it for. Um, I was gonna do it 450 bucks, you know, but I'm the only guy that knows where to go and get the because you you know it's, it's a hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand dollar a day just to get the crew there, to film. Thing. Oh, he, yeah. he, so you have to have wind, right? I show up to the beach where I windsurf every day anyway. There's a full film crew in a trailer. I had my name on the trailer. Actor, Rich Myers. I go, oh, fuck, that's pretty cool. So I get in there. I didn't want to be in there. I just wanted to windsurf. So, okay. And they, everybody's, I got like fucking 100 people, grips, this and that, cameras, trailers. And, you know, 
I just want you to go out there and just jump. And, I, and there was no way. I was like, fuck, how am I going to jump with no way? So, okay, no way. Like, boom, boom, boom. Uh, five minutes. Okay, got it. And he goes, you can come in. And I go, but I, I, this way I do every day anyway. I don't want, I, I, this. He goes, no, you're done working. I go, but I'm having fun. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, okay, well, whatever. See, you, yeah, yeah, you, you do what you want. But here, bang, bang, jing, jing. And they go, oh, so you have to pay residuals. Would you rather have $450 plus 100 or would you rather have 50000 <laughs> I think I'll go, and, but and you just give me 10%. Let's go to the 50. I'll give you 10%. That's how I bought my house. First house. Wow. Wow. So that was the best thing ever happened to me. So then I got signed into the Screen Actors Guild. I don't know how to fucking act. Rich Myers, 31 years old, an actor, a model. I'm always being excited. <laughs> and as soon as I open my mouth, it's all fucked. I go to CBS Studios, you know, all the couch guys are, okay, uh, come on in, uh, Ms. Myers. What, what do you do? And he goes, so I got this part on the bowl of the Young and the Restless. And I go, Oh, okay. So can you do it? Can you read for me? And I go, I gotta, I gotta tell you something. Um, I'm only in this because I was a windsurfer. I really don't know how to act. And he goes, are you one of the, you, you that young boy out there windsurfing in front of my house in Malibu Point? And I go, probably because I'm the only guy. He goes, <laughs> and he goes, hmm, hmm I kind of think you're cute. I go, oh, you gotta tell you what, you got it. And I go, I got the part. And I go, he goes, yeah, and he hands me this fucking script, like thick. He goes, here. So I go, uh-oh. I, I had another friend. He was trying. He was a good actor, but he couldn't get in the union. I go, fucking Rocky, what am I going to do? Oh, shit, Rich. He goes, I go, I don't know how. I, I got this job. I don't know how to memorize all that. Freaking out. Oh, I'm fucked up now. I accepted this job. I'm young and restless. I don't know how to act. And, and he goes, Rich, Rich, you only got this one line. You're boy number one. I go, oh, I yeah? am? I'm not the main guy? And all you got to do is say, how'd I do? Oh, so I got to memorize that. How did I do? He goes, how'd you get this? I'm an actor. You don't even fuck you're doing. Oh, and I go, oh, I know, but it's live. So we go in there live. They go, okay, boy number one, boy number two, come down to the studio, separate me. And there's all the famous actors in there going, oh, gee, dude, dude, they're all cool. And I go, okay, I don't know how to tell you any of you this, but I don't know how to act. I've never done this. And, and he goes, oh, it's just all timing. I go, yeah, well, what do you mean by timing? Fuck, I can't even talk normal. Anytime, everything's connected. And I find go. How, how do we do, do? I fucked it up live TV, and they can't <laughs> undo it. So I get. They would if I did good. They would wrote me into the. Not on live. They, it was live. Solid. Yeah, we, they filmed live. Like it's 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 actually right there. So once they put it on tape, that's done that day. It's you can't just go and come back. And if you're a superstar, they'll uh, yeah. Or if you do good, you get written into more things, and that's what everybody hopes for. They get they want that one break to say the line right. Yeah. My one break, I said so fucked and wrong. Everything was fine until I opened my mouth, and I, you know, I got paid and my residuals. But I go never got hired again. The guy, the cat, the gay casting guy got fired. Obviously, he hired you just because he liked the look of you. No, he wanted he, he wanted me. It was to like keep, a gay version of Weinstein. It was totally fucking gay. Like yeah. he wanted me to get back Did in he there. Try and crack onto you. Yeah, fucking hey. Did he? Yeah. That, did, you, did you sleep with him? Just so no, you get... absolutely not. What's this guy getting at? I told him everything. I go, I don't know how to act. I fuck it. There, there's probably 50 other guys auditioning that day that were qualified. And and I, I, I couldn't believe that he hired me. And they couldn't believe it because he couldn't think I would be that bad. So I think he got fired. But I got other jobs where you don't speak. The residuals and things through, through commercials and stuff. So I did a bunch of that. And that, that kind of helped me get my first house and all that. Crazy. But where other guys like Scotty and all these professional windsurfers, because I call myself semi-professional, they were getting big money from sponsors, like $100,000 a year. Like my biggest sponsor ever gave me 5000 I think, and I had to fight for it. You know, you're Robbie Nash's and all Oh, he was getting more. Oh, but, I don't know. Like these guys, like how much do you reckon they're, they're making windsurfing well, back in the back 80s? Back then, they were making a fucking killing. Like what? Uh, well, like I just remember Scotty, he was the best international windsurfer of all you guys have ever had you know him and mark paul in the beginning so scotty was probably he was the icon of australian windsurfing he was on the international level above me oh yeah i got a hundred thousand dollars i go hundred thousand bucks him and Kate gets all these guys and, and, and i'm traveling with all these guys and i i'm just gotta you know i gotta work as a carpenter or, or, or bartender to keep traveling and these guys are just getting paid bucks wow he goes, didn't you get that? I go, no, because I'm not a good businessman, so I didn't know how to 
self-promote. The central thing was Maui. I, I on purpose wanted to stay Californian to, to um, keep my loyalty to California instead of, even though I've lived in Hawaii, I mean, everybody's from California, but, or wherever, but I just wanted to go be, I'm Californian, California, California. I didn't want to call myself Hawaiian, even though I traveled, you know, South Africa that um, with the Hawaiian team, but I figured we're all, I just kept my California identity. We're kind of like, we call the Hawaiian teams that all came from California, um, Florida, wherever. They're the A team. And I always consider us the B team, us California guys. I mean, we had something different. Our waves are different. And all, all the Hawaiians would come in and, and enjoy the waves that we've discovered in Mexico and Malibu. It, it was a totally different way of windsurfing. It was more smoother and uh, predictable wave riding. And Hawaii was the nucleus, Maui was the nucleus. Even Robbie, you know, they, they ended up going to Maui. Yeah, Even though yeah. Diamond, it all started Diamond Head and this and that. But Maui became the nucleus of design and research and who's who and this and that. Kind of like the North Shore of Oahu is for surfing. You know, you could put in that, if, if you want to make it, you got to make your name there through, through the tests of Hokipa. Because I'm a surfer, and I saw this Steve Wilkins shot of Mike Waltz doing this cutback at Hokipa on the shortboard, 79 or something. And I go, fuck, that's what I want to do. Yeah. And so, and then I'm good friends with Mike and all that. But it wasn't then. I became good friends. But he's the one that inspired me to do it for the surf. Cause it was just an extensive surfing for me. Yeah. yeah and I, I, I had to do all that fucking racing bullshit just to you know, get the sponsors to pay him for my, this and that and that and that. So you, that's just part of what you do just to do what yeah. you really want to do, which was travel and explore. Sure. What, what the hell is this? This is a judge. And me and Jerry Lopez and all these guys, um, we did this whole course on how to be a judge. And, um, but the Europeans, when they took over the whole circuit, um, they got rid of all us locals. There's a, I thought, I thought there was a pretty bad judging for a while. Yeah, I, I really saw a lot of this stuff. And Dodgy I'm, stuff, I'm one it? of the guys you'd think that would go, oh yeah, fuck Bjorn. But I go, no, nah, that's fucking unfair. So Bjorn, and I think he got underscored a lot of times. He was fucking as professional as they get, him and Anders. Yeah. Um, so I respected Anders and Bjorn. Anders was cool, wasn't he? Anders I grew up. Fucking, uh, he's unreal. So Anders and Bjorn, and he's Iceman. I have a huge amount of respect for him. 15 years ago in Maui, and I thought Winsor is dead. I go, hey Bjorn, how you going? I go, you still Winsor? He goes, what else do I do? <laughs> I don't only Winsor for each That's amazing. And I go, well, good on you. I, I know, good and, on um, you. And like just having that single-minded focus yeah. is like it's easy to get distracted. Like you, get, oh, oh, he, yeah, you can't you distract go, him. Yeah, yeah. He's undistractable. That's what I mean. But that, like that's that's a big a big reason okay. for someone's success, isn't oh, it? Oh, absolutely. Like, he's he's, a, he, he's, yeah, he's yeah. as good as the top. He's a, he, you know he's a goat. He's a goat. Robbie's a goat. Uh, then you got Jason Pollock out. He is just he's he, he's the one that turned all the wa the wave riding. He's he he's the Kelly Sayer of, of switching. He's the new momentum and and the new board design because we used to do you know our asymmetrical this and that. Uh, Jason, he was just fucking amazing. Were you in Maui when he rocked up? Yeah, he he, oh, he, okay. he keep us. He, oh, when did you leave Maui? What year? Uh, between ninety and ninety five, as back and forth. Okay. And, and, and Jason, you saw him and his parents. You saw his. Um, hang with us and then leave Jason left his, his his van and gear at my house. That was my old era. He he, he changed it to the new era. Uh, and like what well, everybody's writing different types of short windsurfer boards and ripping rip that it's just crazy what it is now. After I, I, I left in eighty eight and now I go after I my last little masters thing or whatever, it was so embarrassing. It was like fucking one foot and I go I won 80, the first 86, I won a perfect six foot Hokipa, as good as it gets. And then 87 was that big gnarly one. And I won that, and as big as it and gnarly as it gets. And then 88, it was just the full on um, anti-climatic thing, it was little waves like this, but I won. So I went through the, the, the best, the biggest and the smallest. And, I, and that's why I quit. The difference between wave sailing in 1987 versus 91 is just like light years away, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's like the it's like the revolution that Kelly Sater did, and um, I I give credit heaps of credit to Jason Polakow for board the whole change in in, in boards. Like now you get you know pop out models, uh, really light ones, 
but there's so much smaller, more leaders. We didn't, I didn't know what leaders was. I thought it was always something to do with drinks. <laughs> Until I went back to San Carlos, I go, oh, how many leaders you want? I go, I don't fucking just give me an 8-4, eight, eight man. <laughs> yeah, well, Jason and his dad and mom, Nick and Wendy, they're fucking so funny. But Jason, he was just a little kid. Like, yeah, I think I could have, my first kid could have been conceived in their bedroom in Torquay. Popped out nine months later after we visited them. So that could be something that we don't know. I, I think I told Jason a long time ago, Reef. Reef is my son. He was wow. born in Maui. Look at that stance. He's got, he's got his front foot in front of the mask. No, the thing broke. Oh. I, 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 oh. I pretend he's doing a duck jibe. That's this, the one, the big wave one. Oh, hold on. Oh, right, that's that's the, uh, that's the trophy the, that you got. For that one. Holy moly, how cool is that? 86. Oh, that's the uh, the six foot. That, that, was, that was the one that was perfect. That wow. was absolutely the most perfect whole keeper. You couldn't yeah. ask for better. And that's the trophy, it's a bowl. Yeah, yeah. That that's pretty cool. Like, yeah, not only can you just sit it on the shelf, but you can actually use this trophy. Yeah, yeah. Mate, I reckon that's better getting a trophy oh, like that than a better than that, isn't it? Absolutely, because look, this Mate, is broken. What is that? I got like this one. This is pretty cool for surfing. Oh, cool! Yelling up. Yeah. Now you've uh, you cemented yourself in this area. Yeah, uh, I only longboarding stuff, but. Um... Actually, just on a, a side note here, but um, I went down and checked out the. Uh, the statue down the beach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, how random is yeah. that? You come to a new area, and then you get commissioned, like someone well, uses yeah. the model or something. The um, thing is, I was building a roof there. Yeah, Rich, can you do it? And I go, well, do what? And he goes, well, we just need, we decided we, we use your physique, not your face, because it's ugly, but we use your physique to do this modeling. And so, and, he, and Chris Hayring was is an unreal sculptor internationally, and his daughter, Karis. So, we got all the pictures, you know, like jink, 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 and um, and then then I have to go in there because I'm doing work at his house, and they go, oh, come out of here and lay down the gun. And they, they they draw me out, you know, and, and it was a cold day. I'm in my speedos, laying on camera. And what are you Okay, you see, I had a little like, clay on there, you know. It's a generic face which looks like my son Reef. It was pretty interesting how they how they did it. Um, it wasn't about me. It was about they just needed I get a it. surfer. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it was a generic. Thing. I just happen to be the yeah. The physical it's, it's still model. it's still cool though, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's scar in it. If you, if you, oh right, I didn't I didn't pay attention to yeah, that. Go look at that. Yeah. The scar. Oh okay. This, I built my whole house out of here when ah. it was raining. So like right now I'm doing a set of stairs. Oh cool. This is one of my sons. Uh, he does he paints boards. He's an international artist. Wow. He's unreal. He so lives cool. in Bali. He does heaps of unreal paintings. Him and his mom, she's an international artist too, Joss. Mm. So they um, kind of work together, and he's he's an unbelievable. All my kids are fuck. They just surf so good. So they're, they're they've actually helped the history of it. Where I was just one character in a moment. That's mm. how I always see myself as a. And I had a great lifestyle, and I got to do some amazing things and meet some unbelievable friends to this day. They're still my friends. Uh, Dave Sheen, he lives here, so he's he he came Sheeny and and those guys when I. They started when I ended, the changeover. Um, but in Maui, you know, like Mike Waltz, um, sometimes Matt Schweitzer, every now and then Alex or um, Dave Coloma, you know, just on Facebook, you yeah, know, I talk to him. And um, oh, okay, and Kelby. So yeah, and Alan Cadiz is a pretty good friend. I love Alan. Um, oh, he does um, wing. He does, oh yeah, he's on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't talked to him lately, but I keep I try to keep in contact. You know, just do the Facebook thing, but what about Pete Cabrino? Yeah, Pete, ever... he's my favorite. Oh, oh yeah. He, he, and he's helped me out the most. He got me my first sponsor with Victory. Every time I compete against Pete, I always came. You know, he always beat me. Yeah, which is fine because he, he deserved. Well, he, he was he, he was he, excellent, he was, wasn't and, he? And he was so humble because Pete's a totally different kind of guy. He looks at everything different to me. He, he's very individualistic, um, and he's humble, but he's. Frickin', he's a, he's a, like he would have been, if he's in the Olympics, he would have been the guy who wins gymnastics. And um, he, he, he's very innovative on his own. So he just went, he didn't go with the path uh, of a bunch of guys. He didn't, he was not a follower, he's a leader. That was one of the best sponsors, Victory Wetsuits. And that's through Pete Cabrina. And he wow. didn't have to do that. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. He's always doing better than me anyway. And he always, he still is. He's Shout out amazing. to Pete Cabrina. I love just Pete. Woo, Pete! It's like a thank you letter for competing in 
All of us at Simmer are very pleased and excited to have riders of your caliber. We look forward to your continued success. I mean, yeah, a good sponsor so will thank their team. Yeah, I mean, the Kine was a very good sponsor. What's that? Oh, here, here's me and Pete. Look, there's me and Pete. There's Pete. Man. Saw that before. No one wears wetsuits like that anymore, do yeah, they? It's it, like it grabbed my. It hurt my balls. Kevin Martin, he's he's this guy. Modeling, action, windsurfing, rider correspondent. Yeah. This What's this? Car. We've just come through an intense contest schedule. I don't know what that one is. So you get a cover photo, you you yeah, get a hundred bucks. Yeah. So if you okay on a magazine, you get a hundred yeah. bucks extra. And a few cover shots. <laughs> That's cool, isn't it? Yeah. I hated that, but was it sponsored by them? This is I was hired as a model. Rich Myers, thirty-one years old, an actor, a model. So I got modeling. You um, didn't hate that though, did you? Well, that's Joyce. That's Joyce Dutaglia. She's unreal. And Dan Doss. These, these are two of the top women windsurfers. Yeah, that, that's why I did this thing. See, like, this is cigarettes. What's this? Oh, that's another model is that, thing. Is that you? Yeah. Jesus, you got a moustache? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a cigarette? Um... Yeah, yeah. So that, I have, that was in Playboy magazine. Really? Yeah. These are just modeling shots we did in Mexico. She's going, you're a fucking asshole. You're a faggot. I go, yeah, well, you're a fucking bitch. And, and just we're... joking around? Yeah, well, we really didn't like each other, but... Oh, like, really? Yeah. She thought... She a bit thought stuck we, up? Yeah, she stuck up. Puerto Escondido. This is like before before Instagram. This is like... Yeah, we didn't have Instagram. So, I know, so mate. Well, of course you didn't it, have Instagram. I would we'll... have to take it to an interview. So the more coverage cool. you get, the more you're worth kind of thing, you know? Yeah, no, I get it. Sure. So, that's Fred Hayward's girlfriend. Who was? Fred Hayward's. Her, Joyce. Oh, right. But we are just doing modeling. Rich Myers, 31 years old, an actor, a model. That's my girlfriend. But, um, she's hot. <laughs> How many girlfriends did you have? Pretty many. Like, did you just chew through them? Well, what they happened? were there. Huh? They, were just, uh, they were just there. They just I, turned I, up I, at your I, doorstep. We had a good, no, I was in Malibu, California. There's seven girls and one guy. I didn't realize it then until I looked back. It just, I just let it happen. I don't know if I, no, John Guy wrote this one. This is in Mexico. Oh, cool. Where does yeah, John Guy me. live now? Oh, he lives in um, in Perth. You want to get a hold of him? He's so cool. Yeah, I should. He, he's one of my heroes. Look at this. That's a fin, isn't it? Yeah, we call them kelp catchers. Yeah, I can imagine. They'll catch everything. <laughs> do, do they work? No. Yeah. This is um, Sunset um, in the Pacific Palisades. This is where Matt Schweitzer, Hoyle, all the good guys, uh, Scott Shoemaker, Jerry Flattery, the, the original originals. Super cool. Side on shore. And don't forget, they, they're on this 12 foot piece of shits. Right here in this place, Zil Korea. This one. It's my favorite spot. Oh, right. Super smooth. Because um, the, the land blocks it and there's yeah. cup so it'd be I can windy. See. But it's smooth. It's a smooth. Um, looks place. Like a, it looks like a good setup. Oh, it's unreal. I don't know. So, oh, that's for some commercial I did. Oh. Tampon commercial. Tampon? Yeah. Well, being a windsurfer. Yeah. What's the what's the well, angle? The, that was a good one. The angle was um, and with the show you stay dry by not falling off. Was it? Yeah, exactly. You, you got it. Really? You got it. She got a little tampon on, and she's so confident. You gotta go fall off. How do you fall off? No, just fall off, because she's she's so confident that she's dry. <laughs> and I go okay. It was so funny. It was really? so fucking funny. You're always in action. Oh, what a plus. You always feel smashing. Oh, what a plus. For you, Tampax tampons. Action protection you can trust. Because I'm trying, looking for nuggets of gold here, but you've got, holy shit. Is this all full of windsurfing stuff? Yeah. Dude. Everything's everything. What the hell? See, that's Leo Korea. That's a windsurf magazine cover. Um, that's that place I was telling you about. That's probably 1980. Mark yeah. Paul. That's Mark Paul. And that's one of Malta's first sails. This this um this sail there, like it's got no battens and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that one. But it's yeah. got it's got a pretty good sort of shape that, to it. Like, do they actually sail all right? That's a windsurfer sail. Now it was shit. and oh, it was a shit, was it? Okay. Because you're, you're doing a decent turn with that. Yeah, sail. the surfing is good because it's um a good way. But and he, he's one of the um dude. There's great. These are good shots, eh? Yeah. Well, because he's you know Eric Gary, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's he's top. Yeah, he was also like. I remember those, like the names that I remember photography wise in the magazines when I was growing up was him and James Bearham or something, or Barham or Barham. Oh, I don't know. Do you know I that remember bloke? that. Was he oh. a sur windsurfer? Yeah, in Barham? the 90s, he did all the PBA oh. um, shots and stuff. Jesus, look at that thing. Oh, I still got, I still got, there's a life vest. That's my first wife. That's my first wife. 
to South Africa. Angie. Oh, Jimmy Lewis. Yeah, Jimmy Lewis. There's Dave. He made um, a lot of a lot of boards. He made all my boards. He made a lot of my boards. Fit. He made this one. That one. That's my Jimmy Lewis board, and that's my Jimmy Lewis board. He's the best shaper for windsurfing of all time. Wow. By far. Yeah. Wow. By far. So what the hell's in this? Um, photos of shit. Holy shit. Oh, there's my girlfriend. One of them. One of them. Christine, she's pretty hot. I'm getting away from the family mm. um, harm. Yeah, right. And then, oh, so you had a bit challenging. Um, very challenging. Yeah, right. And Are I, your parents still alive? Or? No, my, my dad died, but the, the rest of the family are pretty not, um, it's not a good thing. Yeah, uh, okay. And, and I just got out of there because I didn't like it, and I just did my own thing without mm. their support. Uh -huh. So I kind of, and then other guys took me on the wings, you know, like Terry Lukoff, I would say, John Price, because since I didn't have any, backing from parents and, and that's probably why I probably didn't know how to get a contract or mm. do this so I had to go do win a contest so I could get the sponsorship to go to the next and next I didn't have parents good paying for my travel mm. so if I didn't make it I didn't go yeah 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 and then yeah. it just started flowing but I never really made a lot of money the only thing that helped me out was that Hollywood shit yeah and then plus and so I just like being a carpenter better like nowadays, all bottles are all the same. Yeah. But back then, they were like little um, sculptures. Aren't they, they were, and, yeah. and um, like these are worth a lot of money. Like, I mean, you know that that ball, you know that marble in there. Wow! Oh, that's super. Now, cool. now they're worth a lot of money as collector's items. But um, but I've been collecting like when I do job sites and we dig out old. History is cool, isn't it? I love history, and that's why I'm here, mate, because of history. History is my favorite. So that now... Mayor, he's the guy who's having the big tall guy that's living here. Oh, I get better mine on from the very beginning days. He's the one that runs the camp. Drew Kenny, he's he's the best editor ever and, and writer. This is classic though. Look at this. Neil Pride's one hundred eighty thousand oh. dollars wasn't enough. It's like fuck. I never saw money like that. One hundred eighty dollars I might have saw, but never one hundred eighty thousand. Yeah. But that's the same with surfing. All the guys who like Mark Richards and all those guys and Sean Thompson. And Wayne Bartholomew, they didn't get the money, but then the Taj Burroughs and Kelly Slaters, they, they made it good so those guys can make the money. You know, so they started the professional for scene. For sure, for sure. They, they laid the foundation for commercial and corporations to put money into mainstream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we were just pioneers having fun. I never saw money in it because I didn't do it for money, but somebody must have had some kind of foresight like Hoyle and, and all that. Um, cause they called windsurfing the poor man's yacht. That's how it's sort of, Ken Winner, I think he was the one that mentioned that. Yeah. You've got all, like back in the day you had surfing, which was first. And then, well, then I guess windsurfing kind of came well, along. Windsurfing but... came off of that. Being a surfer, I could see how you could just be, you know, tunnel vision. Oh, surfing, oh, you should, oh, you should, oh, you should, oh, and then some of the guys go, well, like Jerry Lopez and some of our icons, the open-minded ones, they kind of go, yeah, let's expand and go snowboarding, this and that. Go through a lot of negative minds. I thought, well, I'm a surfer and I fucking hate some fucking windsurfer coming and whacking by me without knowing that, hey, it's my turn. And yeah, he, yeah. he just catches the way out there. He didn't realize I've been sitting there. Yeah. And this that. So I, I, I even wrote a thing I called Rich Myers Rules of the Road so you can have respect for everybody um, kind of thing because I, I saw both sides. Being a surfer, I'd go, fuck those assholes. Yeah. Being a windsurfer, i go, Let's police ourselves because um, everybody has to have fun. It's not just the one person. And then same with these stand up paddlers. What are they, you know, we're having that. And, and then they're, they're, they're not sitting in the lineup going into their turn because they're, they're separated. So they're out there paddling and then they catch a wave early and they don't realize that there's a group in there been waiting. Yeah. Surfing one, windsurfing two. Now yeah. it's surfing still one. Yeah, it's and thousands. now it's, it's like COVID, yeah. it's all these little satellites going off of it. So that's where taking the folk, that's where I think the Windsor being lost the financial momentum. Exactly. Because all the best yeah, windsurfers got diluted. They're always forward thinking like Pete and all these guys, they're, they're pioneers to the next level. They're kind of like the um, NASA guys. So they're not looking back. And I don't think they were really looking into, I want to be the hero of the sport forever and ever. I want to do something new, new, new. Mm. So I think that's what took yeah. the, the, um, the snowball out of this money, which was windsurfing, it, it, it sort of got European based in the end. Yeah. 
It's just a natural evolution of the yeah, sport. Yeah, it, it's, it's, that, that's just how it's it a works. natural yeah. progression. Yeah, exactly. And that's the funniest thing because I surfed for natural progression surfboards. And then it, the only way you can describe it, I go, gosh, if it's getting crowded surfing now, gosh, that puff out the sail on the board, I can make it to there and there and there. And I can still be surfing. And then to me, it was a natural progression. The foil, which is fucking unreal. Then you got the wing foil, this foil and that foil. I talked to Kai Lenny, I think a couple few years ago, I went there and I just watched from the cliff. It was fucking 80, it was 60 to 80 foot and it was 60, 80 people out. And up, up on the cliff with uh, his, you know, Wally and his dad, Martin, we're friends of mine and Gerard. And we're, we're watching this and you just see about 60 people on these boards and that vest and all this. Yeah, and only right. five of them really wanted the wave. So they'd all be coming up and so crowded. Oh, really? Is it like that? Is yeah, that yeah. Like, oh, yeah, because there's a channel. Yeah, so, oh, kind of, so they're all sitters, and I'm just going. And then when the wave comes, like I, I ask, I go, how do you know which wave to get and who's going to get? That's an hard decision. Because I just saw all of a sudden 100 of you guys paddling for it. And I go, he goes, he goes, no one wants it. He goes, there's only five of us out there who want it. And they got boats and everything. Mm -hmm. And then there's some under, there's some dark horse guys that with no names like Willie Hunt. He was unbelievable. He'd go for it, but he didn't have a, he didn't, he couldn't afford a jet ski rescue guy, so he had to eat shit and just take it, take all these mm -hmm. on the head. And then there's, so it, it, it's kind of, it became very dangerous. I think Laird bailed out of that situation um, because it just became, it was an actual circus. Mm -hmm. I just went. I mean, the only reason I ever ride big waves is because there's no crowds. Mm -hmm. The worst thing I could ever imagine is a crowded big wave. Yeah. When I when windsurfing started becoming work, I definitely wanted something so I could pay my way. But I'm not thinking bait, bait, bait. Mm -hmm. And one day I was sitting there going, "Fuck, I'm out here with Clark Merritt, and you know we got the open field to get the shots." But I'm down there. I feel like windsurfing now. So Clark, get the camera out. We will get the shots. Mm -hmm. But he didn't feel like shooting then. And then I just went. This is fucked. And I think that's why. Then that's why I told the other magazines that. And that's why I just went. You know, i not. This isn't. I. I. I this isn't why I windsurf. I want to get a one design, the new one. But you know, the new ones. Yeah, they're, they're expensive. Get a second hammer. Like the people. I tried. Oh, okay. If you get me, tell me. Yeah. I tried the one, the new one. Because you know Scott McCurchard? Yeah. Yeah, he's into it. Yeah. So he goes, they go out to Perth and all that. Well, I'll talk to Scott again. Um, Scott's, yeah. I don't know, he's one of the top guys here too. Yeah. Pat, Pat Redman, yeah. Sheeny, and Scott. Sheeny's the guy. Blair Simpson? Who? Blair Simpson. Yeah, Blair! Yeah. Fuck, I don't know, Blair, he stayed with me in Maui. He lived right. my house, I put him to work. All right. Fuck, he's unreal. I love yeah. that. This is Gerard, he's my best friend back in the day. Um, he's, a, he's more the mechanical kind of guy. Designs the things with Brett and Kyleni does all kinds of things. When was the last time you saw this video? Um, well, every year my son, my son puts it on to the Facebook thing. The guy I work with, his brother lives in Neos, and he, every time he wants to have a laugh, he just watches it. I'm gonna compete for my first time what? in a master Shit. division this year. Uh, and I'm gonna go up against Doug Hunt, who was last year's champion. Plus some other really hot guys like Jerry Lopez, Robin Cortez, Craig Masonville, and the whole crew. And I think this year is going to be some pretty interesting conditions. I think we're going to have some big waves. You got to ahead, then, yeah. Should be pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, that was a long time ago. Go windsurfing. If somebody gets out during the seat, he's going to win for sure. We're talking courage now. <laughs> well, some courage and luck. You know, to get through something like that, you've got to be really that. lucky with your timing. What's that? If Robbie's saying that, that means a lot. Because it was gnarly. What are the risks then? Going on the rocks? I would say the risk of death by drowning <laughs> and uh, ruining your equipment. Craig Mason, yeah. Though, because he's he's like before my time. But what, what, was, mm -hmm. what was the deal with him? Um, the deal with Craig is the big wave surfer. Um, he never wore a harness. And he, he was the local, local uh, from the beginning days of Maui. And I, I was the, the California boy. And you know he just he's just gnarly. He's a big guy. Craig became a Christian pastor, just just sort of before this, and then not, the, not, not a pastor. A pa P A S T A. That's where cows live, isn't it? Pastors. No, not like that. A pastor. Yeah, pastor. <laughs> but before he was pretty hardcore. Um, I, I would call him kind of, you know, like uh, you know, like localism kind of vibe with the all all the guys in Paya and the early part of windsurfing at Hokipa. They, they had a, the Paia crew, so we're all blow-ins to them. And like, 
you know, if it was eight foot, Craig would always go, ah, oh, it's only three foot, it's only three foot, kind of that, you know, Hawaiian style. He never wore a harness. Yeah. He never wore a harness. Why is that? Because he just didn't. I mean, he's a big, strong guy. I don't know why. I could never not Did wear Did he want the exercise? No, he just, he, he didn't get all the carpal tunnel. And he wore gloves, but no harness. And he didn't always make waves, but he would go for, he learned that, he was the one that got that lay down, um, sail bottom turn and yeah. off the top. Yeah, yeah. He did, most of them, they're great photos, but they never finished. But they're beautiful. And he, him and this other guy, Dave Collin, they, they wired that. They were the big powerhouse, big wave surfers. They have their fearless, um, I mean, they go deep sea diving off out in the middle of the ocean. Fearless guys um, and talented. They didn't finish it off and they go, oh, the next day it closed the whole contest. So theoretically and bureaucratically, you know, you, you end the contest, I would have won because I'm in the winner's bracket and he closed it off there. But the produ the production guys go, hey man, fuck, tomorrow 30 foot waves, close all events. This would be great for, you know, their production. I see. So I go, okay, um, shoot, oh well, I'm gonna do it. I'm not gonna be a pussy, I'm just gonna go. I, but I was going, oh my God. I got, I go, now I can lose. I just go, look, I'm going for it. You know, I'm just gonna do it, see what happens. And we said a big prayer on the beach. The, the head guy, Ricky Ryan, Craig Mesa Villamy, who I always go, he's a big kind of gnarly guy. And to have him go, Rich, um, we care about you. I would say a prayer, because I thought, you know, he just didn't care if I got worked or not. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. To me, I, I, I kind of took that. I go, well, that's pretty nice. So we say this prayer on the beach before we went out. And I'll never forget that. Craig says, well, please, um, you know, bless us also. None of us get hurt over this, but we're, we're going to obviously go compete to win because that's what you do. So I'm going against Craig, who is the crowd favorite, I imagine, I don't know, but, but knowing in Maui, he would have been the crowd favorite. This is the first time Craig's ever really been this far in a competition, right? So he's a big wave rider, big wave hero. That was, he, I was a dark horse then. For the Masters Wave Sailing Championship, Rich Myers and Craig Masonville meet the Monster Surf head-on. Incredible conditions. The North Shore of Maui is getting pounded. Yeah. So when you watch this, is it still... I, I, I feel every move. I can really? You can just remember it as clear I, as I, day. I, I do. I have a good memory. I remember every little, every little chop hop, every little That's stupid... That's mad. That's so I, cool. No, I actually do remember everything. That's amazing. I mean, I mean that's stupid little thing. To the inside. Well, the stupid little thing. Yeah, well, just on this little wave, it's oh, really right. warm, and I'm just trying to score points. Craig Masonville, blue sail. Dude, that was a good job. That was decent, eh? Like, that was really good. He got forward. good points for that. Snaps it around and picks up this white water. And that's pretty good for Craig not being such a free saw guy. Masonville, no harness. originally from Michigan, on the blue sail, from Santa Monica, California. So I did a few more turns. Apparently, I found that I won even if I didn't get that big wave. To the outside, Richie Myers has made it. He's found an opening, a lull in the waves. Rich Myers, 31 years old, an actor, a model. From I have to pause it there, right? The I know. The part that I just find so funny, like, <laughs> is when they, you, you, you go, Rich Myers made it outside. Actor, he's yeah, an actor, that's a model. Really I'm like, like that part. It's Every so actor, funny. It's huh? so much funny. Some of my friends go, hey, you an actual model, porn producer. Yeah. <laughs> and they, 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 that was the funniest part because that's where everybody starts laughing. They go, because the guy just kept going on. And I go, well, whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never heard about Carpenter. But it's just, it's it's such a, I'll tell you why that's so funny well, to me as be. well. I don't know why. But... You, you're out there in the final in some massive waves and the comment is like, he's an actor, model. Oh, it's just like, oh, he just does it all or some shit. Like, oh, it's just, it's just funny. It's just like, it's yeah. so classic. It's such an 80s thing to say. An actor, model, porn star, producer. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's like a little action figure, you know, it doesn't, it's just like, you, well, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like that. Okay. <laughs> But everybody seemed to like it because it goes down on the inside to get, the wind dies in there. to get restarted. Look at the wave to the outside. Yeah. Like how far out the back oh, did you go so to catch far. this? Like these are the rocks. That's the headland here, pavilions. And eight to 12 foot waves break here. These broke out here Jesus. so far in 30 feet deep of water. Like when I was out there, I would look, I could see past, you know, Jaws and I've never been out. I've never seen a wave break out this far. Wow, wow. So I go, I better take this because I, I didn't come out to ride a small wave. Because in between sets, you know, I want to get a big wave. But what, was that a was that like a three-wave set or four-wave set? Or yeah, what? about five or six-wave oh, set. Oh, and and, and set. I, I went for the biggest one, and the wind, I couldn't get in it. And so then the wind started to die because it turned more offshore. 
and I sort of barely caught the one I caught because one went, the other one went under me, and I, I, the wind just totally went offshore instead. So that's why I ate shit because I couldn't get speed. He's out there, he does his transition. The See, largest wave of the set. This is a 10 foot ground swell. Now it hits the reef. It's got some yeah, weapons to it. Time. I didn't really see that turn, to be honest. Oh, yeah, it starts to close see. out. He shoots straight for the bottom and tries to get away from this wall of white water. Richie Myers gets eaten. I felt like nothing just ripped it. Everything just, I felt like, I was just, my limbs are all over the place. And it just, I, sometimes you can hold on and go through it. I couldn't. It just totally tore me apart. I, I felt like a, an ant in a washing machine. I go, uh-oh, this isn't good. So I always count one, you know, one roll. You can roll with it because the wave's rolling. One, two, three. I count five rolls. I go, okay, that's it. And then my ears burst from the pressure. So I knew it was deep. I was screaming for the top. And my eyes were open and I just went. The pain was so gnarly. And then I lost the, the pain. The pain in your ears? Oh, the pain in my whole oh, body. Everywhere. It, was just, it was just so painful drowning. So everything went away and then I had no pain. And I saw a half hour black and white movie when I was four years old, chasing a dog in a dog. Really? Like cowboy. Yeah. It seemed to me a half hour video. Of all when I was a little kid, all these really good memories, and then but my body fought, fought, kept fighting, and I was probably lower than that. But I could see all the white water bubbles and bubbles like heaps of it, just and I just sucked in. Then I got the pain again, and I just sucked in all the foam. Ugh. And but apparently, that's what saved me because there's a lot of air in the foam. I get to the top, and I go, oh, Okay, now the pain's really back. I don't want to do this again. And the next wave, it was, Why don't you dive? I go, I just want my last new breath. So I took the next one on the head, and I was so lucky it didn't push me down, it pushed me in. And I go, well, that was pretty cool. The, uh, the first wave brought me down, this one brought me in. Yeah. And then I was out of danger. And I took the, about, about that one breath, I'll never forget that breath. And that, that held me to the next time you see when I come in and I go, oh, what the fuck, there's Doug. I go, where's my board? He goes, it's right here. I, go, I couldn't see it. I can't see. And I, and I freaked out, I go, oh my God, I can't see. I'm blind. I can't. And I, like it was I literally myself, black. Li yeah. I, I, I saw these th I could kind of see these stars, but I couldn't see that. And I, I you know, I could sort of see some figure ahead of me. I go, wow, wow. And I freaked out because I bought myself. But he's a good caddy, isn't he? He's a good caddy. Like he, he caddy. He used to go to the He's the best caddy you can ever get. Rich is totally exhausted. Mighty. He's such a good to try to recover Richie yeah. Myers rig further he, he up the hill. And Myers oh my God. Totally exhausted. I, I love how I'm trying to get I can't I don't know what I'm doing but, there. But it's so funny, mate. Like you you just you're completely out of it and he just dumped the windsurf and then go, there you go. Like we went to get the other one. They'd be cheating if he helped me do it. Okay, you just you just think he gets it's something to hold on to. Doug Hunt, a great cat, he all sorts of strength. How does your gear? Good. How do you do that? No, but how is your gear in one piece? That is. I swear to God, that is the biggest, one of the biggest miracles of this whole thing. I reckon, apart from you not dying, is the gear intact. And dude, you're up. Big more. I'm so happy that I came in. I like to tell you this. May I say the consequences are drowning by death. A death by dying. It's true. I almost did it. <laughs> wow. Let's get out of the out of the fire. Okay, line. the wave you caught. Sorry, there's no wind on it until the very end. And I couldn't get away from that. I just went and it just lip chased me and caught me. Just felt it coming at you. I looked back and I went, oh, ah. Get out of here, but I couldn't because it wasn't the right wind. The direction was too east. You didn't try to hold the door. Yeah. You didn't try to hold on your board. Oh, it just I remember I, I, I purposely unhooked when I was dropping down. Well, then you're getting caught up in your straps or something. Oh, I really, yeah, that would have been... So I, I'm so glad I went like this. Okay, this is... It might, I think I'm going to make it. But I think... Uh-oh. And I unhooked. I remember thinking, down, dropping down, I better unhook. I don't know. Until I almost died. Really long, long time. I, I did about four or five somersaults underneath. About 30 feet down. Okay. <laughs> you think, can the lifeguard save me? Should they I think. give up? And wave? No, I couldn't give up, but I... I waved and lifeguard couldn't save you, man. I'd be dead by the time I got out there. That's a solid water, Were you waving water, for a guy right? or were you waving for a guy? So that lets me know I'm in trouble. There's a lot of turbulence and there's a couple different rips. They've got a channel here and a channel there. So there's all these different secondary rips. Mm. You know, because there's a lot of water turbulent. coming in, so the water has to go out, right? Yeah. 
Seemed like an eight minute swim that might have lasted an eternity for you. Yeah, I thought it was my last swim. Eight minutes. <laughs> okay, when you shit. got your rig in there, you couldn't see it floating around. I it couldn't just... see anything. Buddy. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I know what to say. <laughs> Feels good to be on the beach. And about, oh, I think it was about a half hour or so, just, just sat by myself and just didn't want to talk about it. And seeing all these bing, 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 shh. And I could see sort of there, but not that way. And then about a half hour later, I start to see again. And then I went later to a doctor, you know, a couple of days later, and I explained the whole thing like I did you. And he goes, oh yeah, you just lost billions of brain cells and that's right before you drowned. All the oxygen's out of your brain and this and that, and then that's what happens, you, um, you know, the, the vision thing. That was scary. Going I, blind, I don't think I could take that. Jerked that around, how did it feel like? Looked to us like you were drowning. Well, I was drowning. <laughs> and I... <laughs> I was. We gotta be honest. Uh, I, know. I, mean, what you I just love that bit. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's just so well, funny well, though. <laughs> I just love how casual nature you are about it. It's it's just it's the best. Anyway. I tried waiting for help at first and I saw that that wasn't to my avail. It looked pretty gnarly. What happened? Well, I didn't know what was really going on. All I know is I it's time to start saving each little breath. Thought a lot about little trivial things like but, you know, who's going to spend my winning check money and who's going to be able to cast a check? And then I thought about why I kind of predicted my own um, drowning in the interview right before I left out there. I said, yeah, it's a consequence of death by drowning. Here I am doing that exact thing. <laughs> then I just didn't panic anymore and just thought, well, that's it. And just relax. The next thing I knew, I popped up, noticed that uh, it was time to get into shore, so I swam in as fast as I could. That was a pretty big wave, you know? There's a lot of interesting theories on how they judge waves, but that looked like a big one to me. How big do you think it was? Well, um, it's probably on a Hawaiian scale about 12 feet, and if you measure from the feet, the bottom of the wave to the crest, it's about a 20, 25 foot base, I imagine. I guess I didn't get that All right. I know is that was one big wave, one bad wipeout. Yeah, I'll bet that now again. <laughs> I, I just, if I was gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. I was gonna go, I really tried to get the biggest wave because why even do it if you're not gonna, that would be kind of ridiculous to not go for it. So yeah. no, I was gonna go for it all the time, but I was hoping it didn't, I was hoping it came out better. But I took, I, I had to deal with the time and the, and the wave period to get that wave. Otherwise I, I couldn't be picky and, and choose a better shaped wave. Cause it was, I mean, the, if, if I miss that set, there's nothing else is gonna come. And that was the most ridiculous thing to do is to go out there and to ride a little wave in. I couldn't even fathom that. I couldn't even live with myself. If I went out there and waited out set and ride in a five foot wave. That would, to me, I couldn't have done that. Yeah. It's just kind of more of an adrenaline thing. I'll just do it. And that scares me the most. Sometimes I never know what my uh, correct decision is gonna be. Mm. But You just threw yourself in the deep end in that one. I remember there was a girl on the Yellowstone River in Montana. And I, I kept that in my mind always. And this girl, she's in a bikini, and I'm sitting there freaking out at 50 foot. She comes to the next level, 60 foot. And um, she's a Montana girl, and I have a little California boy visiting. She goes, yeah, if you think about it, you know, um, you'll never do it. And she just went bang. And for, I, I'll never forget that. So she was right. Because yeah. the more you sit up there, you could try it one day, and you go, the more you think about it, you can talk yourself out of it. Yeah. yeah. But, um, and most smart people talk themselves out of it. <laughs> I definitely um, played the game to win. Yeah. And um, I, I was glad I did, but I didn't think it would ever, I didn't even understand what this thing was being filmed like that. I mean, I never I never thought about it. Yeah, but like that whole thing where he goes, Richie Myers gets eaten and stuff. I mean, like, was a lot of people talking about it back then? Yeah, they were really? going, that was gnarly, go shit. So I think, um, I think yeah, a lot of everybody did, that I knew came in, they go, they couldn't believe it. They were happy for me that I, I lived. So I, I would have to say, um, even Craig was happy that I lived and he's, he never windsurfed again. He quit after that. Oh, really? Yeah. He became a real full on pastor after that. Oh. It was very spiritual in certain ways. It wasn't about winning or ego. It was about, Hey, we lived, we're having fun, but in the meantime, let's not die for a little accolade. Yeah. Um, and I think, uh, so, so I, I was moved in a lot of different ways because of that. And it wasn't about ego. Um, but we, we, we went out to do the job, we're having fun and, you know, hit that level. And I think after that they started 
making guys have more safety promotions and jet skis and, 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 and helicopters. Because right there, that was Wild West. There was, there was zero safety hmm. uh, backup. That. But I'm actually just editing a video at the moment. I don't know if you know, but there was, they've just had a wave comp at some um, Cabo Verde. Oh yeah. Right. Did you follow any of that? No, I, I, but my friend is um, Kai Katsudorian in it. He, oh yeah, yeah. Is he yeah, your he, mate? Yeah, he's a really good friend of mine. Oh, he's a legend. Oh, I love Kai. Oh, he's so cool. Yeah, he, but, he's the one that um, I, him and I do Mexico trip. I, I've known him forever. Kai's unreal. Kai, Hello Kai's everybody, so, what is it? Punta Preta, yeah. the 2022 somewhere. That's Kai, yeah. yeah, yeah World Cup. Here Come comes Cazunia with his second ride. Is he rolling into the dream Whee! final here? Traveris is behind him. Unfortunately, Brazinho's plans just I'm went real. on hold as he's on the rocks. Here's Toma Traversa on wow. the best wave of his heat Fuck so far. Real. One of the best waves of his event. That was a super yeah, impressive sales of way inside of him. Short 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 Traversa goes down, straight to Rodinger. There goes Rodinger, first hit. Beautiful ride for Rodinger. This is a pivotal moment in this heat and this Woo! contest and this career. Of this, this wave is lining up all the way across the wall. Maybe that looks one so of the better Rodinger's had during this event. That's the one gets under it. Further riding there, he is not done, folks. He's going to jet ahead of this thing. So Keep it on Rodinger. One more turn deserves another. Gets hung up there a little. He's far from done. 15 seconds. It's looking real good for the samurai here. Fuck, he's he's on this wave. It's done and dusted. Bat Rodinger is going to win the first round single elimination of the 2022 somewhere Cobble Verde World Cup. Let's have a celebration for the great oh, Rodinger. Fucking unreal. That was so cool. That's windsurfing. It was more spectator sport. Because mm. everything's happening. So you're not sitting there waiting, watching the guy sitting on his board, paddling back out slowly. Windsurfing, the guy's doing a, a transition, and he's standing back out doing a jump. So he's always, something's happening for the eye, the spectator. Yeah. All the time. We all, and that was the whole thing about windsurfing and spectator sport. So it is a way better sport to watch live spectating. You got no windsurf boards, old ones well, around? I got this. No, no, I got rid of the board. Fuck, did I give them away? Oh, there they are. I found them. I got my field. Oh go. shit. Take that. Now my harness. In case I do it again. My damn harness. It's pretty dusty. Wow. Yeah. These are all my booms. Do you feel like that? Oh yeah. Well it's all carbon now. Oh. For a start. I mean you can get aluminium, but anyone who's into windsurfing pretty much gets carbon. Oh. Like those push pin yeah. things, they're, they're gnarly. Yeah. They're always sticking yeah. and nah, so I've had, these are my ones, my last ones I've had. Oh dude, have you not seen a modern boom lately? Right. That's skinny. Yeah, they're, they're skinnier now. Because I, I always go like this. And when I do my turn, I, I just know where I like my hand. Yeah. I mean, I guess I get used to it, but. Because, you, you know, you go like this, you go like that, and then you just go. <laughs> like the carbon actually goes all the way yeah. through now. You know how oh, it used okay. to be like bolted on? Yeah, yeah. So now this is one piece. Oh, and, okay. like, and if you look at the, the tail, yeah. you see this is all one piece now. Oh, okay. Wow, that? this is. Yeah. But so, they're not that much different in weight. It's still... Yeah, I guess because they have to be pretty solid, but... Yeah. And all the masts, I don't know if you use the masts, oh, but they're all, they're, all, they're all reduced diameter masts, you know? Oh, okay. So Shit. So, like, you know, like, you know, before they were, they were called the SDM, standard oh. diameter. Now they're called RDMs. They're, they're basically a lot... The diameter is a lot smaller. And, and, and the flexors are good? That's my, that's, that's my 90 liter board, so that's oh, that's my, 90, uh, so 42 is what I... You know, 84 I used. Yeah. Yeah, and then we used to have our... You know, a mass board or mask was up I here. I know, yeah. And we it's had the white point forward and all that, and then they had the asymmetrical for certain. So, but Jason Polical, he changed all that. Mm. And he showed us how to sort of modern. So, I, I still have the old guy draw my eye, you know, style. I just, uh, oh, this looks nice. Yeah, it's, how many, it's a sick board. That's how, 80 how liters. 80, okay. And how long? Um, not sure. It's probably about two twenty-five or something, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, feet. Like eight foot, seven foot. Good hey. on you, Paul. Nice to meet you. You've been a legend. What yeah, time is it? It's about four thirty. Jeez, that's all right. I've been here five hours, and um, yeah, like I said, I'll probably be coming past back in a couple of months. So I'll yeah, drop no right. I'll drop this magazine off. No worries. Let's take get eaten by a shark. Yeah, let's hope you don't get eaten by a shark. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you'll be fine. You've got. No, I'll be fine too. I, I'll take a bigger guy because they. 
they have they'll eat the bigger guy. <laughs> That's like but you're like a cat, mate. You got like nine lives. Well, you? Yeah, How many four, lives? We've already figured it's fourteen, but you got to do some stuff other than making videos about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll speak to you later. All right. See ya. Yeah, do you want some chewy wings? Oh, mate. Well, you can have them because I won't eat them. Can't beat that. That is super cool. What sort of fish is that? It's Jewfish. G wow. D H U R. It's the best fish you can get here. It's the prized fish from um, West Australia. Amazing. You can't beat it. I mean... I'll give that to my mate and he'll be stoked. He'll know. He'll, he'll know be stoked. Do. All right, Paul. Woo. See you, Rich. Yeah. See you, mate. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. That was... It actually was a bit surreal because, you know, when you... Uh, have watched some someone on a video or you know something from a long time ago then you actually get to meet him in person it's just a weird experience and um yeah he was so welcoming i mean i've never met rich before and literally just at his house for five hours so um yeah that was that was a super super cool day so Thank you, Rich. Thanks to everyone for watching this video. I literally have got about five hours worth of chatting with him. <laughs> I just started the camera and I didn't stop. So I'll edit the video down. I've got no idea how long this video is going to be. But uh, anyway, there's a little piece of windsurfing history there. And um, yeah, I'm glad that I was able to, uh, to get it. All right, guys. Hope you're well wherever you are and um, yeah, hope you get out in the water soon.